Hello, my name is Stephen Kunane, and it's my pleasure to present the results of the BENEFIC trial on ketones improving brain energetics and cognitive performance in MCI. I'm presenting these results on behalf of my co-authors from the University of Sherbrooke in Quebec, Canada, and from Nestle Health Science in Lausanne, Switzerland. These results will be published, they are published in fact, online uh, in Alzheimer's and dementia with the first author as Forte M. Uh, Forte et al. These are my disclosures with Nestle Health Science and the Alzheimer's Association being the principal funders of this project. So the context for the benefit trial is that we view the brain like a hybrid car. That is, that it's running on two types of energy to make the engine run. Glucose is the gasoline and ketones are the electric motor and the battery. And normally glucose is supplying 70 to 95% of the energy that the brain uses, the adult brain uses, and ketones are supplying the difference. You get to 30% of the brain energy requirements from ketones if you fast for extended periods or indeed in infants as well, in which the brain is running consistently on ketones as about 30% of their requirement. The problem as mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease develops has been known for a long time as far as the glucose metabolism by the brain is concerned. These images show uh, in cross-sectional studies and in control individuals in mild cognitive impairment, MCI, and in Alzheimer's disease, AD, the decline in glucose uptake in the brain expressed as the ketone, as the glucose constant, K. These are PET images with the tracer fluorodeoxyglucose, and you have a wide distribution of the yellow-orange color high on the scale in the healthy control individuals with normal cognition, when MCI develops, there's a gap that starts to show in the parietal cortex so that the reddish color starts to disappear. And this is most evident in Alzheimer's disease. So it's all green here now above the ears where it should have been orange uh, and yellow. This problem has been known for over 40 years now, and we describe it in some detail in our recent review in Nature Review's Drug Discovery. So the decline is shown with this dotted circle as it being a, a low level of decline in MCI and a more severe decline in Alzheimer's disease. If we look in the same individuals with a PET scan that's done about 30 minutes before the glucose scan using a ketone tracer acetoacetate and also look at the uh, uptake rate constant. So these are the same individuals. We see a lower uptake of ketones in the brain than of glucose, so the green is lower on the scale than the orange. But when we move to MCI and to Alzheimer's disease, we don't see a decline. There's not less green going towards blue. In fact, there's a little bit more yellow and even some orange in some cases. So there's no decrease in the uptake of ketones in Alzheimer's disease. And in fact, in some individuals, there's some increase. So this shows that this area of the brain is starving, in fact, because these cells require uh, some form of energy and they're using ketones because they're not getting enough glucose. So when we look at this model of the hybrid car, what we're seeing on the left-hand side with the glucose is that there's a decline of about 10% in mild cognitive impairment and a decline, a further decline of another 10% or a total of about 20% in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, a problem that gets worse as the disease progresses. Whereas with the ketone side, there is no decrease in the uptake uh, in, into Alzheimer's disease and the ketones remain a, a good fuel both in MCI and in Alzheimer's disease, results which we have detailed and published over the past couple of years. So this is the basis for the benefit trial, the goal of which was initially the phase one of this trial was to attempt long-term brain energy rescue with ketones in MCI. 
So by using an, a ketone supplement, we try to restore what we call the brain energy gap a little closer to normal. That is what we refer to as brain energy rescue. When we moved to the second phase of the trial, we had seen some cognitive improvement that I'll be showing you, and we increased the sample size to validate the impact of the brain energy rescue on cognition. These are the uh, details of the benefit trial design, which were reported on clinicaltrials.gov, phase one and phase two. In phase one, we did the cognitive evaluation and we did the brain imaging. It was a six month intervention. We did the cognitive evaluation again after six months and we repeated the brain imaging, just as I showed you in the previous cross-sectional study. In the second phase of the study, we again did the cognitive evaluation, but we did not do the brain imaging, and we did a metabolic study to assess whether the body was able to use ketones as effectively at the start as six months later. So the, again, the cognitive evaluation was repeated afterwards, the metabolic study was repeated afterwards, and there was no imaging during the second phase of the study. In phase one, we recruited 52 people and completed it in 2017. In phase two, we recruited 70 people, and it was completed in 2019. During the six-month phase with the intervention, the oral nutritional supplement was a skim milk emulsion drink, which had an active ingredient or a placebo ingredient. The active ingredient was the ketogenic MCT, KMCT, 15 grams of KMCT, which is a mixture of the C8 and C10 MCT in 125 mils or about four ounces per day, twice per day, in whom 39 people completed the study. Those that were on the placebo got HOSO, which is high oleic acid sunflower oil, mainly oleic acid, non-ketogenic, same volume, same frequency per day, 43 people completed the study. So the cognitive I'm going to describe is based on this comparison of 43 versus 39 collected over both phases of the study. The participant demographics of the completers separated by placebo group or MCT group, and you can see the characteristics are listed here, the data are shown here, and the p-values are shown on the right. So there was no statistical difference in the male-female ratio, the APOE4, uh, ratio to APOE3, age, education, depression score, physical activity score, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, or the MMSE. Not shown in detail, also no difference in the body mass index, glucose, TSH, vitamin B12, or homocysteine. These were mixed amnestic and non-amnestic MCI as defined by normal criteria the results of the, of the study, first we'll start with the increase in the blood ketones and brain ketones on this study, and they are reported in, in the article that was just published in Alzheimer's and Dementia. So when we look at the blood ketones, the placebo had no effect on ketones e either at the beginning or at the end of the trial. The KMCT in blue, the, the pre response to a dose of the KMCT, we need to get a nice sharp response that declines over two hours or so. And that response is sustained. It is actually a little more, but not statistically different at the end of the trial. So the ability of the body to produce ketones from the KMCT over six months was unaffected. This increase, we examined the, the ketone PET uh, changes in the brain ketone uptake at around one hour after the dose. And you can see that if they were on the KMCT drink, the ketones light up the brain. This reddish color here is high on the scale compared to the green level of ketone uptake, uh, which is much lower. And if they were on the placebo, it's the same low amount of ketone uptake. So this change is, represents about a doubling, a two-fold increase in brain ketone uptake as shown by ketone PET imaging. When we look at the cognitive results, there was improvement on four cognitive tests in three cognitive domains. The domains were episodic memory, executive function, and language. 
Specifically, it was a free and cute recall test, trial one, that was showed the beneficial effect of the KMCT uh, of trial one. And the KMCT is showing that this bar shows that there's a one word improvement in the number of words recalled, the delta of words recalled, that's the difference between the, the performance at the beginning of the study and the performance at the end of the study. There's an improvement uh, on the KMCT. There's no change on the placebo group. So this is a one word improvement, statistically significant. The same thing for verbal fluency a test in which there's actually a decline on placebo and an improvement on the KMCT. So it's a net three word gain in the KMCT group. And for language, it's the same thing, about a one-word improvement. And you'll see here that it's the low performers on the placebo group at the end of the trial that are sort of not present in the KMCT group. It's a low performance, again, on the executive function and the lower performance. Uh, it's as if we've managed to prevent this low performance in the KMCT group compared to the placebo group. In terms of looking at mechanism, we plotted the ketone results against the cognitive results for these tests. So it's the delta number of words re recalled for episodic memory, executive function, and language against the plasma ketones, either beta-hydroxybutyrate or ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate combined. And you can see that there's a significant positive relationship between the ketone value in the blood and the capacity to, to remember these words uh, with a significant difference here, a significant correlation in, in all three tests. There is an overlap um, between the KMCT group and the placebo group, so the, the ketones did not rise in everyone who, are on, uh, who was on the ketogenic drink, um, but the placebo group was basically around zero here in both senses, uh, and so we see that there's not much of an effect uh, of the placebo and, and a significant effect of the KMCT directly related to the plasma ketone concentration. So to summarize the mechanistic link when we take the ketogenic drink, the KMCT, the combination of C8 and C10 twice a day, they, this goes into the blood, taken up by the liver, ketones are produced in the liver, they're secreted back into the blood. We can see this increase in blood ketones. We can see it translated to an increase in brain ketone uptake. And we can see that translated to uh, improved cognitive function. So the energy cognitive function relationship in the brain seems to be quite clear. In summary, in mild cognitive impairment, our ketogenic MCT drink increased blood and brain ketones over six months. It corrected about one third of the brain energy or brain glucose deficit that's present in mild cognitive impairment. The KMCT improved memory, executive function and language and with a moderate effect size in all three cognitive domains. These cognitive results were directly related to the increase in plasma ketones on four different cognitive tests. So there's a direct relationship between the energy status of the brain and the cognitive performance. I haven't shown the details for this, but it's in the publication, but the plasma metabolic and safety profile was unchanged after six months. And this suggests, given that we have a moderate effect size in these cognitive domains with just 40 people per group, it suggests that it's worth testing the ketogenic MCT drink to delay progression of MCI to Alzheimer's disease. This trial was not a progression study. It was not designed for it. It wasn't powered for it. But we believe these data represent sufficiently convincing evidence for attempting to delay progression of MCI to Alzheimer's disease. Thank you to my team and our collaborators. Thank you to our funding partners. And thank you to our participants.